William Adolphe Boguero, 1825 to 1905, was a French painter. It is difficult to exaggerate the popularity in 19th century France of this typically salon painter, whose sublime historical, mythological, religious and genre scenes were showered with official honours and sold at the highest prices during his lifetime. True, his name was always a laughing stock for the avant-gardists. Degas and his friends used the term, lumpy, to disparage the, finicky, overworked surface of a painting, and Van Gogh called him a well-paid creator of, soft, beautiful things. In the 1900s, the avant-garde's contempt for academic painting was justified by the public taste that had developed by then. Bourguero's paintings, along with works by such academic contemporaries as Meissonier and Cabanel, disappeared into the basements of museums. But with the resurgence of interest in figurative painting, interest in Bourguero's paintings revived in the 1970s and 1980s, and major exhibitions were held in Montreal, New York, and Paris. Several monographs and revisionist scholarly essays published around the same period shed new light on his influence on 19th century art in the United States and France. His works are currently fetching large sums at auction. What nymphs and satyrs frolic in these impeccably groomed paintings? What noble heroes display their muscular physique? With what pure love do mothers caress their children, and children embrace each other? Bourguero's view of the human race was so sublime, was so filled with tenderness and light, that the viewer has a desire to touch his work. Bourguero thought of art as beautiful, and anything of a harsher, more experimental nature disturbed him. Man must seek beauty and truth, he told an interviewer in 1895. There is only one kind of painting. It is painting that reveals perfection to the eye. Boguero was a strict traditional painter whose realistic genre works and mythical subjects were modern adaptations of classical subjects, with a strong emphasis on the female figure. Not surprisingly, he was dismissive of the drawing abilities of the young Henri Matisse, one of his students, whom he eventually kicked out of his atelier for his inability to draw. And as a member of the jury of the annual salons sponsored by the powerful French Royal Academy, he was instrumental in rejecting the innovative Impressionists, who were, in his opinion, crude enough to paint in full sunlight. In his own genre of painting, aptly described by Mark Stephen Walker as photo-idealism, Boguero was a technical master. As a young man he was a diligent student at a solid formal academy, the École des Beaux-Arts in Paris, where he imbued it with a devotion to classical antiquity and the Renaissance masters, especially Raphael. In 1850 he won a coveted scholarship to the Roman Academy of Fine Arts for his ambitious, historical, painting Zenobia found by shepherds on the bank of the Arax. He excelled in learning how to create a canvas in a majestic manner, strictly adhering to traditional academic standards of composition, pattern, colour harmony and expression. And throughout his life he was to utilise the time-honoured methods of the old masters that led to the finished work, preliminary sketches, then oil studies, then elaborate drawings for all compositional figures, then detailed oil studies of heads and hands, a large sketch on canvas, and then the painting itself. The spontaneous pigment, accidents, of the abstract expressionists could surely have driven Boguero to apoplexy. In 1856, Boguero began an affair with 19-year-old Nelly Monchablon, with whom he had three children before their marriage in 1866 and two more afterward. He had a magnificent residence and studio in the Montparnasse neighbourhood of Paris, and spent summers with his family in La Rochelle. His great ambition was to create serious works based on classical antiquity, which for the academicians of the time was still the highest calling of a painter. Success came to him early. His skill was so admired that when in 1854 he finished four years of study at the Academy in Rome and returned to Paris, he immediately began to receive orders for portraits and decoration of living rooms. One of Boguero's works in the spirit of classical antiquity was 1862's Orestes Pursued by the Furies, which he showed at the Salon the following year. However, the refusal of the French Ministry of Fine Arts to buy this painting, and the urging of his dealer Durand Rule to produce pleasing genre works that would be more saleable, altered Boguero's development. From then on, 
he began to devote himself to painting in the Durand Rule taste, creating canvases that were highly successful with wealthy collectors. Even during his lifetime there was controversy over his work. Art historian Richard Muter stated in 1894 that Boguero was a man devoid of creative emotion, but endowed with an educated taste which in its pathetic sweetness shows the inevitable collapse of the tradition of the ancient schools. In 1926, art critic Frank Jewett Mather criticised Boguero, saying that the artist multiplied ambiguous rose statues of nymphs, adorned them when they became paragons of virtue, painted them on a large scale that dominated exhibitions, and got his reward. He was convinced that Boguero's nudes had been staged to satisfy the aspirations of a New York stockbroker. Kenneth Clark criticised Boguero's paintings for being smarmy, describing salon art as superficial, using a norm of smoothed forms and waxy gloss. Quote, In 1891, Boguero admitted that the course of his mature work was largely influenced by the consumer market. Do you think you have to please public opinion and that viewers only buy what they like? As a result, my painting style has evolved over time. Quote, There are many such paintings, and some of them have their own charm, such as Temptation from 1880. The relaxed composition, with its clear rendering, subtle colour harmonies, and sincere expression of feeling, represents Boguero at his least contrived. In Temptation, the meaning of the painting is ambiguous and draws the viewer in. In the painting, presumably, we see a mother and child. They are looking at each other. What is going on between them? The title, Temptation, along with the apple in the woman's hands brings us back to the Garden of Eden. Could this be a mother telling her daughter the story of the fall into sin? Probably not. It is more likely that this woman is actually a woman in a moral quandary, looking at innocence in contemplation, maybe at herself as a child, since the woman and the girl have the same maroon ribbons, the same hairstyles, deciding to take a bite of the apple or not. Perhaps, after pondering, the woman will put the apple aside and take innocence in her arms, stepping out of the dark forest into the sun-drenched meadow. Much grander, of course, are his religious paintings, some of which were commissioned by churches, but some were a response to his personal misfortunes, including the deaths of his wife and young son in 1877. This double tragedy inspired the painting Soul in Heaven, 1878. The subject of Boguero cannot be left without mentioning the beautiful portraits he was capable of producing. Most notable are a self-portrait, circa 1853, and a wonderfully spiritualized depiction of Elizabeth Gardner, 1879, a New England artist who became Boguero's second wife after a 20-year courtship. Throughout his life, Boguero remained devoted to his art, stating, Every day I come to my studio full of delight. In the evening, when I am forced to leave because of the darkness, I can hardly wait for the dawn of the next morning. If I cannot devote myself to my beautiful painting, I am miserable. 